Hello folks, welcome back to the channel. So behind me is my 2009 Chevy Silverado 3500 HD Duramax Allison truck and my 2018 Arctic Fox 992 truck camper. I bought this last August, so I've had it about seven months now. So the topic of today's video is gonna be all the different modifications and upgrades I've done to it during that short seven or eight months that I've had it. So let's get right into it. Definitely prepare yourself for a long video. This is gonna be pretty involved. Not terribly detailed, but just showing some of the basics on all of the different upgrades that I've done, which I've done a lot in the short time that I've had it. So right off the bat, you can see that I've added a big floodlight on the outside there up top of the fridge vent. I haven't totally finished that project yet, but I did a similar thing on my other truck camper. I'll put a link in the description below to that but I'll have a switch down here for it. It's tied into power for the refrigerator. That particular light is amber color. On the outside, I've replaced the original marker lights, at least part of them. I haven't finished doing all of them yet. These three are still original. These are a two-piece design where the lens pops off, and that lens doesn't totally seal up against the body of the light. It will actually get dirt in there and whatnot and turn dingy after a while. The new light is a totally sealed design. These come in red or amber. They actually are the exact same mounting footprint as the original light. And there's another style of light that's similar to the original light here that I could have used as well, but it's also a two-piece design. This is completely sealed, and I had these on my last truck camper as well as several RVs, so I'll throw a link in the description below where I show how I installed these on one of those previous RVs. This already has LED tail lights. I also replaced the backup lamp with an LED. These, I took that little LED out of my 811. I have had those for so long, I don't even remember where I got them, but somewhere on the internet. Another must do upgrade on all of my RVs is to replace one of the vent fans with a Max fan. And this is the Max Fan Deluxe. It's got a built-in hood. And that's the best part about this vent is the built-in hood. The built-in hood is nice because then you don't have a normal vent fan with uh, another hood on the top of it, which then adds probably about four to five inches more height than this has. And the air exits out back through the screen in the back there. Max Fan Deluxes are also quieter than Fantastic Fans. I have a fantastic vent fitting up in the bedroom there and I don't like it because it's noisy. Inside this lower cabinet here I added some USB ports. I did this while I had the oven out installing the inverter. That gave me access to run some wiring down below the oven and into the fuse panel down there. I've got a switch so I can turn everything on. I've got USB here, more USB, and then 12 volt. And this is actually a micro USB charger that I have for my cell phone, which also allows me to plug in another USB item. That works out really good. And there's a cord here that I snaked up through the top, so I can also plug something up here and charge. So it's nice to have the ability to charge stuff and have it out of the way and hidden. The main lights in the camper are operated by this dimmer switch. It's always kind of a nuisance to have to fiddle with the dimmer switch every time you want to turn on the lights. So I added a rocker switch right there. So now when I want the lights on, I can just reach up here and hit the switch. Another thing I added, you can see this tablet here. I've got another video on that that I'll throw a link to up above. But that tablets powered all the time and I have a USB port that I added up there. You take the microwave out and you can get access to all kinds of wiring back there and that's how I have this USB port wired in. I've also added a different light fixture. I actually replaced an original light that was here. I just didn't like that other light. It was a little bit too bright and it sort of glared out in your eyes when you turned it on. This is a light fixture that I built Oh, back in about 2009. So this is the third RV that I've had it in. It's uh, made out of a piece of oak. We've got a little switch in the middle and it has three recessed LED lights installed in it. 
up here in the cab over next to the bed, we've got a 120 volt outlet and also a USB and 12 volt. I took the 12 volt out and installed a switch. And then I also installed a higher quality USB charging port. The original USB port that was in there was really low quality. And the first time I had the truck camper out using it and had my phone plugged in there, that charging port kind of had this high pitched squeal. So I had to unplug my phone. So I actually couldn't charge my phone that night because that squeal was somewhat annoying. So there's a little switch there that I can actually turn that USB port off. Another thing I did up here was install some new light fixtures next to the bed. Those are reading lights, but they have a nice little glass globe on them. The others were an enclosed globe with a little spotlight. And they were good for reading lights, but they didn't light up the bedroom area very much. Which I was used to having on my other truck camper that had little glass globe style reading lights. So these provide a lot of area light. With the other lights, it was just kind of dark up here. Up here on the wall where the bedroom meets the bathroom, that's where my TV plugs in. I replaced the 12 volt port there. This was actually 12 volt and USB. And I installed a new little wooden panel with higher quality components. And I didn't really need a USB here, so I replaced the USB port with a switch. That way I can turn off the power to the TV. It's kind of annoying when you have a little bright LED lights up here in the bedroom is actually enough to keep people awake at night. There's a little red light on the power cord for the TV that lights up any time the TV has power to it. I just thought it would be more convenient to have a switch there instead of having to unplug the TV and plug it back in. I installed a right angle coax connection on the TV wire and I installed another one of those on the back of the TV. I upgraded all the speakers in the camper except the ones outside so Two out of the six haven't been replaced, just the four interior speakers. I think this is the third RV that these speakers has been in too. Yep, a lot of times when I upgrade RV components, I keep the old stuff and then when I sell the RV, I take my upgrades out and reinstall the old stuff like those speakers. Another example of an item that I removed and reinstalled into a different RV is my sea level tank monitor. I don't have that fully functional yet. I need to get some tank sensors. I couldn't peel the sensors off of the tanks in the old RV to reuse. It would have ruined them. But this entire monitor panel has been replaced. I cut out the old plywood, built new plywood, and rearranged everything so that I have space for my Color Control GX and my BMV 712. So that's what this is. This is a smart battery monitor. Up here I added a switch. That's going to be for some exterior lighting that I'll stick to the underside of the bumper. And here is a 12 volt outlet. And this is a switch for that overhead light above the sink. That light is also controlled by a dimmer switch. Basically the, the logic here is that this is an entry light switch or entry light which typically Arctic Fox or Northwood puts those over the door. So why that one's over the kitchen, I have no idea. But anyway, it's another similar situation to that light right there. Turning the light on and off is kind of annoying to have to fiddle with a dimmer switch all the time. So that's why I decided to go with that. And since it's above the sink, you want to have some extra light above the sink when you're washing dishes or doing work. So it's easy just to reach down here and hit that little switch. Water heater control. This is the AC side of the water heater. And here's a 120 volt outlet. Those are both original. So is this. This lower portion of the panel, I didn't have to make any changes to it. Generator remote and sea level tank monitor, which I mentioned before. Here's a little water heater lockout safety switch. I'll throw a link to a video where I show how to build this. It just prevents accidentally turning on the water heater. 
And powering up that 12 volt outlet up there at the top is a new fuse panel I installed. I also rerouted some wires to that that were on an old fuse panel that was totally inaccessible, buried way, way up there in the back behind the sink. So this is the same capacity, it's just a nicer fuse block. You can see that I've added quite a bit of wiring and stuff back here. Part of my inverter installation project required installing a shorter oven. The original oven was 21 inches and I believe that the measurement is from the top of the countertop to the very bottom of the oven. So the original was 21, this one's a 17. And this is a filler panel that I had mounted to cover up the gap there. I just needed more space between the bottom of the oven and the top of the inverter. The inverter sits only about a quarter to a half inch below this surface right there. So this is a really nice oven. It's made by Furion. It's got backlighting on the knobs. And then we also have a light inside the oven. But super cool is having a, a window at an oven just like a residential oven would have. Northwood is now using this same oven in the 21 inch version in all of their truck campers. When I had the oven and everything dismantled, I installed a new 120 volt outlet there. That's a perfect place to install an outlet and have a little place where you can plug in an electric space heater. This is originally was screwed in place. I installed some magnets and a little knob. That way it's a lot easier to get access to the valve and the hose to winterize. But that little black device right there is a SureFlow accumulator tank. Every RV needs to have one of those. It eliminates the short cycling of the pump when you only have the water turned on partially and it doesn't pulsate as much from variance in pressure having that accumulator tank. This window here in the back next to the door, I even upgraded that. And yes, I even stole this out of my other truck camper when I sold it. This was a thermal pane window that I installed to replace a single pane window in the previous truck camper I had, which was an Arctic Fox 811. That truck camper didn't come with thermal pane windows, so at some point, uh, about a year or two after I bought the rig, I upgraded a bunch of the windows. And that original window was not a sliding window. So when I upgraded, I said, hey, I want this one as a slider. Anyway, it's really convenient having this slider window back here. So I decided I wasn't going to give that away, window away with the truck camper. This window here in this camper was a direct replacement for this slider, which was in my 811. So I was able to swap the two windows out. Looking out the outside of the window, you can see it's a really nicely made window. It's made by a company in Vancouver, Washington, Motion Windows, also known as Peninsula Glass. Keyless entry, that's an upgrade that I have moved from several RVs to this one. This is my Arctic Fox 992, but I'll show a video up above of the upgrade where I installed this on my last RV. All of my exterior compartment doors, I rekeyed them to match the entry door. I bought these from the same company that I bought the entry door lock from. A new outlet cover out here, actually this is uh, for the cable TV satellite connection, but this is much more waterproof than the original cover that was here, and it just looks a lot nicer too. It's made by Furion. And I installed the same cover over this electrical outlet on the back. 
The covers came white and before I installed them I actually painted them with some Krylon white fusion spray paint. My experience with a lot of RV plastic components is that they tend to turn yellow after a few years. So to prevent that from happening, I decided I'd spray them first. This little hatch right here did not have a magnet on it and it was pretty annoying opening that door and trying to hold it open to get that sliding tray out. So I installed magnets. I didn't actually screw the magnet on. I used some heavy duty 3M automotive trim tape and it's just stuck in place with that. Same thing down there on the actual door. And yet again, here's some more components that I removed from a previous RV and installed in my 992 truck camper. This is a Victron Multi Plus 2000 inverter slash 80 amp charger. So I removed my Victron products before I sold that RV so that I could install them in whatever RV and ended up with in the future. It was an extremely involved project installing it because I had to remove and re-engineer so many different things and move components around. So I broke that project up into about four or five videos and I'll throw those links in the description down below. Several upgrades I did here right next to the bedroom. That's a new thermostat. This is a direct replacement for the existing thermostat which looked identical although this one has Bluetooth control so I can control the furnace and the AC through a Bluetooth app on my phone. And then I also replace the small switches with these big rocker switches. I really like those switches a lot. They're so much easier to use and they take a lot less pressure to operate. Here's the annoying small old rocker switches. A couple of things here in the bathroom. I also installed a new switch here. And that's a new high-rise faucet, single handle. The old faucet was only about that tall, and it was a double handle. This nice all-metal single handle faucet is so much nicer. And there, again, it's a direct replacement for the existing faucet. Another somewhat unorthodox modification that I did, which is easily reversible, is I sprayed Plasti Dip rubberized spray coating over the exterior of both of my skylights. And then another thing I did to the skylight trim is I first I took out the shade and then I took the trim out and I sprayed that with uh, white Krylon Fusion. Any of the skylight trim, it's going to definitely turn yellow after a few years of sun exposure. On my Arctic Fox 811 truck camper, they did start to slightly turn yellow. So probably at least four years ago, I took them out and sprayed them white and freshened them up and made them look just like new again. So to prevent that from ever happening on this, I just took them out right off the bat and sprayed them. My Plasti Dip spray coating will also help keep the skylight trim from turning yellow if I had decided not to paint them. And it'll also keep the sun from fading out other items inside of the truck camper. Another good application of Krylon Fusion spray paint is your exterior window trim on your door. These trim, of course, you can see they're black. They're actually kind of dingy and faded looking, but right now I'm not going to worry about them. On my Arctic Fox 811, they were white, and again, after about two or three years of sun exposure, they started to turn yellow. It was a friend of mine that told me about spraying white Krylon Fusion paint, and it looked, made those look brand new. I probably did that, oh, three years after buying that rig, and it was a 2010 model. And they still look brand new when I sold the truck camper last year. So I'd had the paint on there for probably about seven years. Another must-do mod on the inside is a Camco screen door handle. Super easy to install. They are only about $15. I'll put a link down below and if I can fit one up above I'll put a link up above where I show how I installed these but you can see I use this one as a towel rack on this particular truck camper I also installed one at the top and the logic behind installing one at the top is I could use that as a window shade that window shade is not much of a blackout window shade multiple times in my 811 I would wake up in the morning to the sunrise shining right through that back window up into the cab over and that pleated pull-down shade is pretty much useless as far as a shade that 
you'd want to use at night and then be able to peek outside if you heard a noise. So with this screen door handle up here and a towel hang hanging over it, it's actually a better blackout shade. You could just reach over here and pull the towel back and peek out the window. All of your doorknobs and cabinet pulls tend to work loose after a while, especially the drawer pulls. So one of the first things I always do is pull the screw out from the back on the inside and put a little bit of blue thread lock compound on it. That down there is the basement circulation fan. It blows warm air down into the basement area when the furnace is running. That vent is new. The vent that was originally there was undersized and it was just like this vent for the furnace, which was significantly smaller than the size of the fan. And I also put a different fan in there. The fan that was in there was extremely noisy. This is held in place with a a drywall screw that's embedded in the carpet. And it doesn't have a hinge, it's just attached with the carpeting. There's my new fan and I actually put in a piece of plywood as a baffle or whatever you want to call it. So that fan has something more solid to attach to plus there's a hole in it that matches the size of the fan and then I built some framework to attach it to. So the fan is actually only blowing air through that vent. The way the fan originally was installed is air didn't have a clear path through the vent to the fan. It could actually suck air from inside of that compartment because the fan was not flush up against this piece of wood. And you couldn't put it up flush against that piece of wood because there was some other framework back there. So I built that new piece of framework and then attached that new piece of plywood with a hole that matches the size of the fan. I installed some nice cheap indoor outdoor style carpeting in all of my cabinets at least the big cabinets where I would be storing stuff so it's that one this one down here and also on the bottom shelf all of the other cabinets like the kitchen cabinets and drawers I use some kind of vinyl rubberized shelf liner non-skid material I don't like that mesh style non-skid shelf liner because that stuff slides around. This solid stuff never has moved. Of course it can't move in there because that's a small space. But my experience in using that black mesh style is I don't like it. Because in a big area like this it will move around. The dishes and stuff will stick to it but it won't stick or hold itself firm to the bottom of the cabinet. Another upgrade I did, super easy mod, is installed a different outlet for the microwave. So this outlet has a switch on it. The only reason for that is that I can save power when I'm running on inverter power. So there's no need to have the microwave powered up by the inverter except when I want to use it. So I can just reach up there, hit the switch when I want to use the microwave. Yeah, you could argue, well, why not just unplug the microwave? Well, that's a little bit more effort. I like to make things as easy as possible. 120 volt outlet behind the dinette here. I plugged in a little six outlet power block. As you can see, I've got three different things plugged into it. So I always have a lot of stuff plugged in down there. In the refrigerator here, I've also taken some of that shelf liner and installed it in the door pockets of the refrigerator. Here's a nice little upgrade that the previous owner did. It's a coat rack that hangs over the top of the door. And he has it, uh, some little zip tie mounts stuck to the door. I don't think I'll ever take that off because I'm almost positive that actually they aren't stuck to the door. They're just little pads. I'm not totally sure. Oh, I see. It's screwed to the top of the door so it won't move. So those are just used as anti-skid devices. I see. Anyway, that's a really nice place to have a coat rack. That's one thing my 811 lacked is a place to hang coats or even a place to put a coat rack. I almost forgot that was there else I'd have to use it more. Battleborn battery 
upgrade. I would never have done this to this rig, but I had bought these for a different RV, which was a travel trailer that I owned in conjunction with my Arctic Fox 811. In my 811, I had AGM batteries. I'll also include a link in the description below how I did that AGM upgrade, but I kind of did a carbon copy, but a little bit different here. Physical dimensions of these Battleborns are a little bit smaller than the Group 31 AGMs I had in my 811 where those batteries took up the entire space inside the battery box. In this case, these being a little bit smaller in physical dimensions, I was able to shift them over to the side and have space for my inverter fuse and also put some wood spacer blocks between the batteries and then also use some tie-down straps to hold them in place. It's starting to get dark here. Clouds in the sky. I don't have any solar, so I've actually got my EU 2200 back here charging up my batteries. It's just purring away like a little kitten. So I'm going to get back in there and finish up editing. Here's a little 8 inch Samsung tablet that I installed. I did a whole separate video on this that you can check out. I'll have a link in the description below for that. But it's held in place with a RAM cradle. And on, on the back side, we have a piece of RAM tough track. So what this is doing right now is it's monitoring my BMV 712 through the Victron Connect app. It will also, oops, if I hit that button here, it shows my inverter. I also have a Victron DC to DC charger, but because that charger is not active right now, it's not showing up there. If I hit the inverter here, it will connect to the inverter. The only thing I can do on the inverter side of things with the Victron Connect app is power it on or change the state of the power switch. Inverter only, I can do on, charger only or off. Or change the AC input current limit. The reason I can't do much with this is because the Color Control GX overrides the Bluetooth app. But if we take another look here, I've got a bunch of other apps. So my Mopeka tank monitor, my Honda generator, my that's my EU2000 control, my Bluetooth thermostat control, and a Hughes Power Watch dog surge suppressor. I haven't actually even used that yet, so I haven't figured that out. I haven't even taken that unit out of the box yet. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed the video. Like I said, it was going to be a pretty long one. It's even taken longer to edit. Here I'm about eight hours in. That's combined time of editing and uh, shooting footage for this video. It's been a pretty involved project all day long, but it's definitely going to be worth the effort. And I'm still not done yet. So be sure to subscribe to my channel and also check out the links down in the description of all the detailed upgrade videos that I've done for all of these projects I've outlined. At least most of them I've done individual videos. So thanks for watching and have a great evening. New light above the... Oh. Well folks, like I said, this was going to be a long video to edit and watch. It's taken me... Well folks, you were right. Whoops, and delete. Well folks, this did end up turning... Whoops, delete.